Hey, welcome to third grade. I'm your teacher, Mr. Rittenhauer, and it's great to be a part of your distance learning classroom today. So if you remember from yesterday, you can make this screen bigger by clicking the YouTube button down there. Woo. All right, so um, let me just start off by saying that I really, I was praying, I really hope that you had a good day yesterday. Um, first days are always nerve-wracking, whether it's the first day of school or the first day of virtual school. Um, things are usually a little bit uh, challenging that since we're unfamiliar with them. But I know each of you are brave and you're tough and you're strong and you probably crushed it yesterday. Um, and hopefully you still had time left over to do some things that you wanted to do as well. All right, so we are going to do a three-part lesson today. Um, the fourth part will come uh, after you're done with the video, um, which will be some number facts. So let's start with our common sense lesson for today. So as important as it is to do math and science and writing and reading, one, would ar one might argue that it's even more important to have wisdom. And to gain wisdom, uh, you have to look at things outside of those academic subjects. So let's look at today's common sense lesson. Never throw anything out of a car or a bus window. And if you look at the meme, if you throw a cat out of the car window, is it considered kitty litter? Now, obviously that's a joke. I would never uh, imply that you should throw any animals out of anything. Um, but let's talk about this lesson, okay? What could happen if you did throw something out of a car window? Or what could happen if you threw something out of your bus? Yeah, not good, right? You could, um, one, it could hit someone behind you and cause them to get in a wreck. Um, two, it could actually end up hitting the back of your car and, and ruining it, especially if it was something hard. Um, and three, now that litter that you just had is on the road or on the side of the road and it's going to pollute um, our, our earth. And an animal could come by and eat it, especially if it's if it's not like a banana peel or something that um, can biodegrade, it might, it might end up getting stuck in an animal's body and killing them. So it's really important that we keep our trash and everything inside our car till we get home and then we can throw it away in the trash can, all right? So that's obvious. That's why it's common sense. Okay. So we are uh, going to start off with a writing lesson. And we're going to do a couple writing lessons this week. And they're all writing letters. If, uh, if you have available at your house an envelope and a stamp, um, please go get that now as well as a blank piece of paper to write your letter on, okay? So pause the video if you need. Okay, so I'm in the corner of the screen now. Uh, we are going to start with the envelope of the letter, all right? If you don't have any envelope at home, no big deal, just Hey, just watch this for review so that you know how to address an envelope. You don't actually have to do it. Those of you that do plan on sending the letter that we're going to write, I want you right now to think about who you want to send it to. Whether or not that's grandma or grandpa, aunt, uncle, maybe it's your friend, somebody that you probably aren't going to get to see because of this shutdown. Well, as it just so happens, I got a message this morning from my teacher friend in Franklin, and I have some really sad news, boys and girls. Um, Nick, you know, from earlier in the year, the one that moved, something um, happened in his family where his, his mom did something bad, okay? Kids make mistakes. Adults also make mistakes. And Nick's mom made a mistake. And now Nick and his little sister Caroline, you might remember her, she had Miss Rollman. I know Emily Popovich's little brother Joseph was in her class. Well, they are living in um, 
in a special home right now, and I was asked by my teacher friend from Franklin um, to see if anyone would be interested in maybe writing him a letter. Uh, he's going through a lot right now, and I know everyone's going through a lot, but can you imagine being going through all that without your family? Uh, so I am going to make my letter to Nick this morning, and you are welcome to as well. So whoever you decide to write it to, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the middle of your envelope. So pretend that my screen here is my envelope. Okay? And right in the middle, I'm going to put a star next to where I want you to find. Right in the middle here of the envelope, I want you to write the name of the person that you are writing to. So for me, I'm writing to Nick. And of course, if you're writing to grandma or grandpa, make sure you put like grandma and then their last name, like Grandma Campbell or Grandma Rittenhauer, okay? So, you put, get the person's name, pause it if you need more time, that's totally fine. The second line is always the address. So let me look, pull up my phone here because my friend texted me the address for Nick. Um, okay, so Nick's address, his temporary address, is 132 Jared Lane. Now I'm not going to write Lane, I'm going to abbreviate it. It's L N period. Alright, so once you've written the street address, now you're going to write the uh, the town or the city that that person lives in. So in this case, for Nick, it is. Oops, I'm gonna undo that because that's messy. Kennerdale. For those of you that don't know, Kennerdale is like if you're driving past like Barkyville, but before you get to Franklin. So Kennerdale, and then you, after the city, you always put a comma, and then you put the state abbreviation, both capital letters. So in this case, it's P-A, and then you're going to put their postcode or zip code. Same thing. So Nix is 16374. Okay, so um, we're going to write another letter later this week, too. So maybe if you're writing one to Grandma or Grandpa this time, maybe you might want to write one to Nick next time. Okay? Um, I'm actually going to include in your Google form later uh, a spot for you to put your address if you are interested in possibly writing a letter to someone in this class. Yes, I know. I'm excited. If you want to write a letter to a classmate, um, Go ahead, whenever you're done with this video, in the Google form, you're going to want to include your address. And I'm going to put everyone's address together that wants to do this. And later in this week, whenever we write another letter, I'm going to post that so that you have the opportunity to write. So maybe, Carson, maybe you want to write a letter to Evan. Or um, Jasper, maybe you want to write a letter to Cody. Or maybe, you know, you get the point, right? I don't need to keep talking. Okie dokies. Now that we have... The middle part, so don't don't draw this on your face. Check. That's the most important because that tells the post office who and where the letter is going. Now we need to turn our attention to the top left corner. Okay. So undo, 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 undo. In the top left corner, you're going to put your name first. Remember to write neat. Once you're done writing your name, underneath it, you need to write your street address. Now, boys and girls, I know that there's probably a couple of you that don't know it, and that makes me sad because I think it's really important that you know, one, your phone number, whether it's mom or dad's, it doesn't matter, and two, you know where you live. All right? If you don't know it, 
save yourself the embarrassment because we're not in actual class. Pause the video, go ask mom or dad, okay? It's important that you know that. Then I want you to memorize it. Please, please memorize it. Okay, so I'm going to start with mine. 6, 17, 40. Now, don't forget, you can abbreviate words like drive. Lane, road is RD, avenue is AVE, boulevard is BLVD, and they all have a dot at the end. All right, pause the video if you need. If not, we're going to keep moving on to the city. So for me, it's different than yours, probably. I know everyone lives in Mercer except for Willow. She's got a Sharpsville mailing address. So for everyone else, pretty much, it's going to be Mercer, but for me, it's not. Wow. So I got this awesome new stylus, but it's still a challenge to write neat. All right, after you put Mercer or Willow, sorry, Sharpsville. <laughs> Put a comma, and then you're going to capitalize PA, and then you're going to write your zip code. So, actually, now that I think about it, Wiley, I wonder if you have a New Wilmington one. I don't know. You you should know that. Um, your zip code is probably, most of you, 16137, right? For me, it's not. It's very close, though. It's 16127. Man, sorry about that, folks. Keep messing up. One six one two seven. Okay, so pause it if you need to. We got our mailing address, our return address, and the last thing is one of those guys. So stamps usually come in a roll. If you look in the bottom corner here, I've got mine. Chee -chee -chee. You know, or a page. You just need one stamp. All right. Because we're just mailing one piece of paper, it's it's light. I believe it's every ounce that your letter weighs. You need a stamp. And unless you plan on shoving like six pieces of construction paper, you probably are only going to need one. Okay, so put that in the top right corner. Make sure it's neat. Good job. All right, now we have our envelope done. Let's get to the actual important... Um, I shouldn't say important because both are important, but let's get to the reason why we're doing this, and it's to write a letter. So grab your piece of paper. We are going to start writing. So I just had a piece of line paper, and I added, um, I added some things so that you can work along with me here. I'm going to make mine. I'm going to write it in blue because I like the color blue. You know what? Let me just do purple because it's my favorite. First things first on your letter, let's give it a date in the top right corner. So today's date is 3, which is March 31st, 2020. All right, so now that we've got the date, we're going to actually skip a line and go all the way over to the left side. And we're going to start our letter with a heading. We almost always use deer. Some kids think you put a comma after deer, but hopefully my students remembered it doesn't go after deer, it goes after the person's name. All right, so, right, whoever you address the envelope to, or if you don't have an envelope, whoever you're giving it to in your house, whether it's deer mom, deer dad, whatever, for me, it's Dear Nick. Then what do I need after that? What do you think? I'm going to start calling on kids. What do you think, Jasper? Good. Dear Nick, comma. All right. This is the part of the video that you're going to pause, and you are going to focus solely on writing. I want you to write um, a couple sentences, thoughtful sentences. Um, follow all your punctuation rules. 
to the person that you want that you're writing to okay and remember if you're writing to Nick right, be sensitive he is he just needs a lot of love he just wants to know that he's not alone okay so maybe you might want to say dear Nick we miss you we hope that you're doing okay we're thinking of you um, and then tell him a funny story you know share something about you and uh, whether that's with Nick or with your grandparents they want to hear about your life too don't just say hi I miss you goodbye okay make it more personal than that so pause the video and get that done all right welcome back so what I'm gonna show you is just the first paragraph of what I wrote in my letter to Nick. I wrote more, but it's pretty personal, and so I'm not going to share it with, with everyone. But here's what I wrote at first. This is my first paragraph. I heard about what you're going through, and I wanted to reach out on behalf of your old Mercer class. We are sending you our love and prayers. Okay, so I read that to you for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to share what I wrote to Nick since I'm writing on your behalf as well. But second, I wanted to share that so that I could read it out loud. Good writers always reread what they wrote to make sure it's, it's good. And I think I have everything that I need. I don't see any spelling mistakes. It sounded right. I think I've got punctuation where I need to. So I'm gonna move on to my very last step. And that is the closing. Now this letter is to one of my former students, all right? He was part of our class family. I'm going to sign it with four letters, love. Maybe you want to write, stay healthy. It's up to you. But after you're done with your closing, you always need to add a, what do you think, Evan? Good job. Always add a comma. So love, because the comma is like taking a little break before you write your name. Love, then you, on the next line right below it, Put your name. Love, Mr. R. Okay, so your letter is done, but let's just say that you want to add something extra. Maybe you forgot something. You can skip a line underneath your name and go back over to the left side, and you can do this little trick called a PS. All right. Now, a P, the P stands for post, it means after your letter. If you forgot something, you can add it in. So maybe I forgot to include something to Nick. I'm going to write P.S. I hope you're, you're being nice. And Nick's sister's name is Caroline, so that's what I'm writing to Caroline. Exclamation point. Okay, so if you forgot something, that's your chance. You can add it on. You don't have to go back and erase your whole letter. You can just add on a PS. All right, so now that you've got your letter complete, read it one more time. Make sure it's perfect. And um, you're going to fold it. So that it will fit in your envelope. And then you're going to stick it in your envelope. That looks like mine. It's addressed. It's got a stamp on it. So once you stick it in the envelope, you are going to want to... Here's my envelope. You're going to want to do one of two things, all right? I absolutely hate the envelopes that you have to lick. But you might have to lick it and seal it and then even add a piece of tape to make sure it's secure. There's a great Seinfeld episode about that, by the way, that your parents might have seen. Or, this is why I buy these special envelopes that have self-adhesive. You just peel it off and it'll stick itself. All right, you want to make sure it's secure because remember, it's going to go um, to a couple places before it gets to where you want it to go and those places... Um, oh, there's a lot of movement and a lot of the handling of the letters and you don't want it to come undone. So once you're sure it's secure, then you've got two options. All right, Actually, three options for this. Option number one, of course, if you didn't actually 
Um, if you don't have a stamp or an envelope or you're sending it to someone in your house, you can just go give it to them. So that would be option one. Option two, if you did what we did and you actually like are going to mail this out, you need to go put it in your mailbox and lift the little flag so that the mailman knows, hey, they've got a letter that I need to take to send. Um, if yours doesn't have a little flag, you might have to attach it with like a clothespin or something um, on the outside of your mailbox. But if you're not sure, ask your parents, all right? They'll help you. Um, and the third option would be if you are um, out and about, which probably won't be very often, but if you do have to go to the grocery store or something and you want it, you can swing by the post office and you can put it in the um, big blue mailbox out front. Uh, that way you don't actually have to go in and um, I'm not even sure if the post office is open um, for that. So just put it in that big blue mailbox and then the post office will take care of it. It should get to where you want it to go in about three to five days, all right? Unless you're Peyton Fisher and you send it to your uncle in Hawaii, then it might take a little longer. But um, like I said, we're going to be doing another letter later this week and I hope that... Uh, I hope that everyone in the class wants to participate so that we can send letters to each other. Um, that would be kind of fun to get something in the mail from a friend from class. So, All right, I am going to give you a chance here to take a break while I pull up our next activity. So if you want to pause and go do something else for a little bit and come back, you're more than welcome to. Okay, welcome back, boys and girls. It's time for round two. We've got a science lesson today on your blood. All right, so this kind of fits the theme of what we've been talking about um, even this past week where we learned about germs and how to kill germs and how we get sick. So we've, been, we've just been talking about, you know, things to do with our bodies. And today it's going to, um, we're going to explore why we have blood and what does it actually do and I hope throughout this video um, whenever there's questions I hope that you're able to kind of either talk them out loud or think about them in your brain and um, kind of hold on to these because later um, in your in your Google form I want you to share some of your thoughts okay all right so I'm gonna shrink myself to the corner and play the video Hi, it's Doug. Blood. We've all got it. Personally, makes me a little squeamish or lightheaded if I see it. Maybe you're tougher than I am. I heard, though, that not every living thing has red blood. Some animals, like horseshoe crabs and even different kinds of octopus, have blue-colored blood. There's even a type of lizard that lives on some islands in the southern Pacific Ocean. It was discovered recently that these lizards have green blood. Isn't that weird? Someone named Beckett has a question about blood. Let's give them a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Beckett. I have a question for you. Why do we need blood? That's a great question. You might have heard that blood flows inside of something called blood vessels in your body. These are small tubes in your body. You might even be able to see some of them from the outside. All of these blood vessels in your body connect together at the heart. One set of vessels, the arteries, carries blood away from the heart, out toward all the different parts of your body, down to your feet, up to your head, out to your hands, to all of your muscles. Then another set of vessels, the veins, turn around and take that blood back toward the heart. In a way, it's a lot like a racetrack with blood going out one way, circling around and coming back again, then starting over. But why? Why would there be all these vessels to take blood away from the heart towards all the different parts of your body, then turn around and take it all back to the heart again? What do you think blood does for our body? All 
Okay, so what do you think blood does for our body? Hmm. I know that blood moves all around my body, so maybe blood gives my body energy? Maybe blood gives or makes certain parts of my body work, right? Hmm. These are all good thoughts. Let's find out. Here's one clue about what blood might be doing for our body. Even though blood vessels are found all throughout your body, by studying the inside of the body, scientists discovered that there's a whole bunch of little blood vessels that connect to the small intestine. That's the tube that food moves through after going through your stomach. It turns out that as your food gets broken down into tiny microscopic nutrients as it's traveling through your stomach and small intestine, those nutrients get soaked up or absorbed into your blood vessels that connect to your small intestine. This is one super important thing that blood does for our body. It carries all the nutrients from the food you've eaten from your intestine away towards all the different parts of your body that need those nutrients. Without blood, the nutrients in the food you eat wouldn't be able to reach the rest of your body, where it helps your body grow and make repairs. But even though that alone is an incredibly important job, that's not all the blood does. There's even more. One job, especially, is so important that without it, you can't even live longer than a few minutes. Here's a clue. Again, by studying the inside of the body, scientists found out that once the blood comes back to the heart through the veins, there's actually this other side racetrack that it goes on, to these right here. It does a quick stop at these, then it comes back to the heart, then goes on to the body. Do you know what these are? They're the lungs, the inner body parts that are involved in breathing. As you breathe in air, your lungs are taking oxygen out of the air. Just like all the different parts of your body need nutrients from your food, they also need oxygen. Take your muscles in your arms, for example. They need oxygen. They need air in order to be healthy and work properly. But how are they going to get oxygen if they're located inside your arm? The answer is blood. Blood carries both nutrients from your food and oxygen that it gets by stopping off at your lungs. Okay, I just have to pause it to point out that that woman was ripped. She's a she's huge. She could crush me. Wow. <laughs> okay, sorry. Once the different parts of your body grab the oxygen from the blood, that blood goes back to the heart so that it can go on that side racetrack to the lungs and get more oxygen again. Oxygen is so important to all the different parts of your body that you can't live longer than just a few minutes without it. Now, one quick thing about this diagram that I've been showing you this whole time. This diagram, and a lot of diagrams showing blood vessels, often show the veins as looking blue. In fact, if you're able to see any of your own veins, Many people describe them as looking kind of bluish. And some people have wondered then, does blood change color? Is the blood that's carrying oxygen out to all the parts of the body, the blood in the arteries, is that blood red, but the blood that's low in oxygen, that's on its way towards the lungs, is that blood blue? Well, it's very easy to think that this might be true. But scientists have found out that the answer is a little more complicated. Blood does change color slightly when it's low on oxygen. It gets a little darker in color. We could say it looks a bit more purplish red. This partly explains why some people describe veins as looking more bluish in color. But it's not actually blue. It's dark purplish red. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Beckett, for asking it. Before you vote on next week's question, we put together some amazing visuals that we'd love to show you. Take a look inside, or if you don't have time, you can skip straight to voting.
Okay, so before we look at this bonus, which is really cool, by the way, um, I thought it, I would point out that your veins, even though they look blue, like he said, they're actually not. They're just darker red. They're more like purplish. So if you get a cut, you're not going to see like blue blood or anything. If you um, if you get your vein, it would be just darker color blood. So let's open up this bonus. It's all about how other animals breathe. So you and I, we breathe through our mouths, right? A lot of animals do, but there are other animals that have more interesting ways of breathing. Number five. This kind of looks like a nose, but it isn't a nose. An animal does use these holes to breathe, though. What animal do you think it is? What do you think? It's a whale, and that's his blowhole. It's like a nose, but it's on the whale's back. Whales use it to breathe above the water. Looks a lot like a nose, huh? Look at shooting boogers at us. Ah. Whales are really neat. I've been lucky to see them up in Maine a couple times and in Alaska. Really cool. Number four. All right, so whales hold their breath for about an hour to swim. How long do you think these animals can hold their breath for and why? What do you think about the elephant? How long? What about that bird? How about the iguana? Which one of those do you think can hold their breath the longest? My money is on the iguana. Gannet birds dive underwater to catch fish. They hold their breath for about a minute. Watch them swim with their wings. Kind of reminds me of penguins. How about you? are cool. This is a special type of igu an iguana, a marine iguana. It holds its breath for about 30 minutes while it eats underwater plants. Wouldn't that be nice to hold your breath for half an hour? That would make bath time really long. And we've got our elephant. Elephants go swimming too, but they don't need to hold their breath. They just stick their trunks above the water to breathe. Hey, so elephants win. They can stay underwater as long as they can lift their trunk up. <laughs> Good for you, elephants. Number three. Caterpillars don't breathe through their mouths or noses. So how do they breathe? How does air get into their body? Take a guess. Well, we should know this from Miss Jackie from Munnell. Uh, she taught us that almost all insects breathe through the air. Tiny holes in the side of their bodies. We call them spiracles. See? Kind of like a little nose on the side of its body. It opens up to breathe in and gives the caterpillars the oxygen that they need. So this caterpillar see-through, you can look inside it as it breathes and see the air moving. really cool. Number two. Frogs can breathe through their nose holes. 
nostrils. But they are also they also sometimes fill up their cheeks with air. Why? Take a guess. Why do you think they do that? To look cool, right? Now it's actually to help them make loud sounds. Right? Different types of frogs use their air sacs to make different sounds. They use it to attract mates or to send warnings. And now the last one. Humans blow bubbles using the air in their lungs. Which animals do you think can blow bubbles? Oh, I love doing that with chocolate milk. Look at that husky. It's able to blow waters, blow bubbles in the water. And this pig is also blowing bubbles in the mud. Who do you think the best bubble blowers are? It's dolphins. They use their blowholes to blow big bubbles, and they can even blow bubble rings. Wow, look at that. Dolphins are so cool. Whoa. All right, boys and girls, that's all the time we have for science today. Um, I hope that you took away from that lesson some of the main points, which are blood is very important. It carries two main things in our body. It carries nutrients, right? That's the energy we get from food. And secondly, it carries oxygen to the rest of your body, which is so important. All right, so you can either take a break or you can go grab your Grammar Simple Solutions book, because we are moving on to the third part of today's lesson. Okay. All right, so welcome back if you took a break. If not, hopefully you get your Grammar Simple Solutions book up and ready to go. We are on page 106, so I'm going to put myself in the corner. We're going to go through this together. Okay, number one, lesson 106, so let's see, I called on Jasper and Evan, I think it's London's turn, I've ever made a list here, so London, how can we make loaf plural, look at the F here, we can't have F-E-S at the end, it's just like Y-E-S, you don't have it, right, you have to drop the Y and add an I, well, in the case of an F, you drop the F and add a V. Good work, Lulu. Add a V. All right, so keep that rule in mind. Um, Sophie, what do you think life plural would be? If you have more than one life, you have like a cat nine lives, right? V, E, S. Good work, Soph. All right, so number two, match. Concrete nouns name what? I'm just going to draw a line. What do you think, Bobby? Concrete nouns name ideas and emotions and qualities? Or do you think concrete are things you can see and touch? Well, Bobby, what is concrete, right? Think about that. Outside, concrete, it's like, it's hard. It hurts if you've ever fallen on it. Um, if you're riding your bike and you land on concrete, it's something that's hard, something that you can actually touch. Now, um, let's see, Lucas, you're up. An abstract noun, I know we know the answer already, but think about art class, abstract. It's like something that's creative, it's an idea, right? That's what abstract is. So can you think of an abstract noun? Hmm. How about joy? And can you think of a concrete noun? I'm thinking joy cone, so I'm going to say ice cream. You can actually touch it, right? And it tastes delicious. Okay, let's move on here. Number three. Write the past tense form of the verb. She was not 
injure in the accident. So the past tense of injure, if it happened yesterday, would be, what do you think, Patina? Good work, girl, injured. Good job. Number four, choose the word that match the underlined word in the sentence. All right, so it says choose the word, so maybe it's more than one. Let's read the sentence. There are many advantages to riding a bike. So which words mean the same thing as advantages? What do you think about difficulties? Cody, yes or no? Advantages, difficulties? That's a no. All right, how about, let's see, fish, benefits. Are benefits advantages? I'd say so. Uh, let's see, doobie, drawbacks. Are drawbacks advantages? No, that would be the antonym, right? The opposite. And Emily, good things. Are advantages good things? You bet your pop a bitch. So benefits and good things. All good things, all good things. Yeah. Olaf is my favorite. Okay, let's move on here. Number five, in which sense is wind used as a verb? So I'm immediately thinking action. In which sense is wind used as a noun? So a thing. So sentence one. Um, it's your turn, Willow. Don't forget to wind your alarm clock. I think I'm reading that wrong. What could you do with an alarm clock? It's spelled the same as wind. Yeah, wind. Don't forget to wind your alarm clock. Most of you don't even know what that is. Um, but if you're as old as me, you know that that's whenever you take your clock and then you actually like twist it in the back and it'll um, it'll go off whenever it's it ends up re getting back to the start. So anyway, shows how old I am. What do you think, Willow? Is wind a noun or a verb? Is it an action? Yeah, right? You're spinning it. It's an action, right? So it's a verb. All right, let's see. Michael, you're up. A strong wind knocked the branches down. A wind. Is wind, in this case, a thing? Is it a thing that's knocking the branches down, or is it an action? Well, the action is knocked, right? That's the actual action that the wind's doing. In this case, it is a thing. A person, place, or thing is what, Michael? Nice, good job, a noun. All right, next page. So, Carson, you're up. Choose the strongest adjective the day before your birthday to complete the sentence. I thought the movie was funny, hilarious, or humorous. Which one of those words is the strongest? Well, Funny is just, it would be level one. Hilarious or humorous? Which one of those two? I think humorous would be level two. Hilarious is like, oh my goodness, I am on the ground peeing my pants. It's so funny. So hilarious, I think, would be the strongest. So I'm going to write it. You can too if you want. Good work, Smalley. That leaves me with Wiley. What do you think the plural possessive noun is in this sentence? The teacher was happy that her students' pencils were all sharpened. So, Wiley, you're thinking possessive means there's going to be an apostrophe. Right, Wiley? And plural means it's going to be more than one. So greater than one. Which one of those? Well, Wiley, you're smart. You already saw the only one with the apostrophe is students. But we can double check to make sure it's plural. Look at everything before the apostrophe. And students is plural. So that would be your best bet right there. All right, number eight. I'm going back and I'm calling on Jasper. All right, underline the helping verb and the main verb. So helping verbs are like 
am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had. Those are all help adverbs. And they always come right before the main verb. So even if you didn't know what a helping verb is, you could find the main verb, cha-ching, in that sentence and look at the word before it and you know that's going to be the helping verb. So let's just read the sentence. All right, Jasper, some students have taken all the books about whales out of the library. So what's my action word? What are the students doing? Some students have taken. Well, they're taking, in this case, take in, so underline the helping verb and the main verb. So take is my main verb and the helping verb will look right before it. Is that a helping verb? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, ding, 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 have right there. So have and taken are both verbs. One's helping, one is the main verb. Okay, good work. All right, Evan. Climb means to lean or bend, right? Like to recline in a chair. So which word or which one of these meanings matches our word? The steep incline was a challenge for the hiking group. What do you think, Evan? Is an incline a flat path? Does that have a lean or bend to it? If it's flat, ah, definitely not. What about a slope? Maybe, right? A slope has a lean to it. This is what a slope looks like. Or boulders. Well, do boulders have anything to do with the lean or a bend? No. So chances are it's going to be slope. Let's plug it in. The steep slope was a challenge for the hiking group. Good work, Evan. All right, number 10. London, you're up again. Back to you. Draw a line to match each expression with its meaning. These bagels are just run of the mill. What does run of the mill mean? Unlikely to win, a useless task, or ordinary and exciting. Huh. I kind of think it might be that last one. Don't you think so, London? But before we answer it, let's just read the other one just to make sure. We've just been on a wild goose chase. Okay. I know that you know what that means, London. A wild goose chase means you're going on a crazy, useless task. Good job. How about I'm rooting for the underdog? Let's see. Sophie, you're up. The underdog in any battle or game is the person that is not supposed to win, right? The underdog. So which one of those would it be? Nice work, Sophie. Which means we're going to go back to the beginning. These bagels are just Run of the mill, Bobby. Process of elimination. Ordinary and unexciting. Okay, folks. Excellent work with your grammar. You can close that now. And I have a couple quick announcements before we exit the video. Okay, so first announcement is um, tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we're going to have our weekly powwow slash Kevin time on Google Meet, and I'll post the link for that. Um, it was so much fun doing it last time um, that we're going to keep doing it, okay? Um, second announcement. Yesterday, uh, I've been trying to do one special a day. Um, maybe you're doing that as well, but yesterday I tried doing computer, and it was a lot of fun. I had to change the font in Google Docs, and it took me about five minutes. It was a lot of fun. So today I'm going to be doing gym later, 30 minutes of something, maybe yoga. I'm not sure, but uh, namaste. Um, next announcement. Uh, part four of today's lesson is not in the video. Um, it's number facts since we didn't do any other math. And basically you're going to see here once you're done with the video in Google Forms, there's going to be a spot that has a link for you to go on to a number fact website and it's got a bunch of really cool number fact games I was playing the race car one and I won I was super pumped I was like the fastest so anyway uh, I'm gonna have you go on and just play one of those games for five minutes um, after this uh, it'll be good practice for you and if it doesn't work um, you can uh, always, if you have flashcards at home, practice those, or 
I'm going to try to include a link for just like a normal number facts paper um, that you can look at and write the answers down on another piece of paper or something. All right. So what I'm what I really care about is that you get some practice with those number facts. That way they, you don't forget them all by the time it's fourth grade. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I mentioned this earlier during the writing port part. During the writing port, <laughs> I am going to include a spot in the Google form for you if you'd like to put your address. Um, and then I'm going to post that so anyone in the class who wants to write a letter, uh, and you can you don't have to do it during the lesson. You can write a letter anytime you want, um, but you're going to add your address so that other people can send you letters as well. Uh, if you want to participate in that, um, I always think it's cool to get handwritten letters. I know I've had students that from years and years ago that have sent me letters in the mail, and it just it, it makes my day. So anyway, I think that's all I have for you today. Um, as always, I miss you and I love you guys. And um, be praying for Nick. Just he's just in a really rough spot right now. So all right. Mr. R is officially out. Make sure you do that Google form.